Hello, my name is Tiffany Love, and I'm going to talk to you today about leadership resilience. So I love this definition. A resilient leader is a person who sees failures as temporary setbacks they can recover from quickly. They maintain a positive attitude and a strong sense of opportunity during periods of turbulence. When faced with ambiguity, a resilient leader finds ways to move forward and avoids getting stuck. And I would say many of us have been called to do that most recently. Leadership in healthcare is challenging. We're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations and the expectations and the needs of those operations change. So it requires for us to be agile. We're developing policies and programs to meet the needs of our community. We're developing our leadership teams. We're managing the evolving expectations of value-based care. And we're also constantly working on our strategic plans and initiatives to make sure that we are being innovative and that our strategies align with what's needed to pursue excellence in healthcare today, as well as for the future. On December 31st, 2019, the World Health Organization shared that China had reported a cluster of pneumonia cases. And while many of us may have felt concerned, we didn't realize we were headed into a worldwide pandemic. So those already long days that we tend to work became even longer. In addition, we began to receive communication, phone calls, emails from government officials requesting that we fill out surveys and tell them what our resources are and letting them know whether we are prepared for a pandemic. And so the expectations of us as leaders has evolved. Internally within our organizations, we are leading teams that have a heavy psychological burden. They are caring for patients while they are also making that ultimate sacrifice of risking their own health. Tensions have been running high and some leaders feel as if they're drowning. And so it's our responsibility as the leaders of these teams to remain calm in the chaos and to help guide them through it. And in the meantime, we're battling our own concerns about whether we can provide our staff with enough PPE to keep them safe. We're worried about whether we can provide enough testing to make sure that our community has the appropriate amount of testing to determine how much of a threat COVID is to our community. We're making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that face public scrutiny. We're trying to make sure that we're following the national guidelines and recommendations of what we should do to keep our patients and staff safe, while also trying not to make decisions too hastily that could have a huge financial impact for the organization. And so with regard to leading externally, we're called upon as civic leaders to weigh in on when we should open our daycares, when we should open up our schools and our non-essential businesses. We're having daily engagements with local government officials and determining when and whether or not we need to also close those businesses due to an ongoing threat of COVID-19. And so in the midst of this pandemic, we also had the unfortunate death of George Floyd. And while we all realize that discrimination is present in our societies, uh, it really hit us hard this time. And so uh, the World Health Organization made a statement in 2017 that discrimination in healthcare is widespread across the world. And our experience with COVID showed us that because it's the people of color and the people who are poor who have been impacted more greatly. And for us as healthcare professionals, this just increased the psychological burden of what was going on for us. And it led to protests in over 60 countries. And many of, of those protesters were our healthcare professionals trying to take a stand to say that we no longer will tolerate discrimination in healthcare. And so with all of this psychological burden upon us, it is so important that we take a moment 
to make sure that we are taking care of our healthcare teams and also taking care of ourselves. So if you're feeling emotionally, physically, and mentally exhausted, it's important to look for those signs within yourself and also within your teammates. And also to look for those signs of burnout, such as withdrawing, procrastinating, skipping work, using food, alcohol, or drugs to cope. These are symptoms that should not be ignored. And so, probably like you, as COVID hit, I felt like I could no longer work those long days. I could no longer push past the fatigue that I felt because I just felt like I was not recovering. And so I developed a resilience plan. And the number one thing you need to do is rest and recover. We're human. You need to allow your body time to rest and recover. And number two, it's really important to set an intention for the day. And I like to set the intention that I want to be a blessing to someone else because I feel that the work that we do is a gift and many people cannot do the work that we do. And we touch people's lives in ways that many others never will. And so I like to set that intention for my day that I will be a blessing to someone else. Number three, I call it the first 15. I realized that I had to commit to exercise and that I was gonna dedicate the first 15 minutes of my day to taking care of myself. And so that is the minimum that I do, if not every day, every other day, to make sure that I am staying physically fit for my team. Number four, I found that I would go home from very long days of work, I would turn on the news, and I would practically cry myself to sleep. And I realized that I had to put a limit on the media. Unplug from the media, the social media, allow your mind a chance to rest and think about something other than the, the stressful things that we have to deal with all day, every day. Number five, I always plan and pack a nutritious lunch. I don't want to depend on anyone else for my nutrition. And so every day I take the time to plan and pack my lunch. Number six, it's important to identify activities that give you positive feelings that help you feel recharged. And so I like to listen to positive and encouraging music. I like to look at inspirational videos and spiritual activities that just fill me up with positive feelings. Number seven, it's really important for me to stimulate my critical thinking before I go to work. I don't have time to sit down and read a book oftentimes, so I will listen to audiobooks as I'm getting ready for work. And I found that this is a way where I can get through books that I want to read within a week or so. And so I really enjoy starting my day off, stimulating myself with some audiobooks. Number eight, it's really important that we are educating ourselves because of the responsibility to our community it's important that we listen to the scientists. So right at the beginning of the pandemic, one of the first things that I did was to look for a guide on what we need to do in a pandemic. And I found the World Health Organizations had many resources. And so I would say definitely look for the scientific literature that supports what you need to do and why you need to do it. And that way you feel more confident when you're called upon to make these decisions for your organization as well as for your community. It's really important to reassess your workload. So one thing that I did was to take a step back and to let go of projects that are not meeting the mission and vision of my organization or myself personally, and to commit to the things that really count. And some things you might be able to delegate to others, but it's really important that you reassess your workload and make sure that it's balanced. And then 10, last but not least, it's important to create a pleasant homework office. During this quarantine or during this pandemic, I should say, I have had to be quarantined at home or I've been called to work from home. And so I think it's really important to create a, a pleasant homework environment 
so that when you're working at home, you feel like you're being just as productive as you would be in your office. And it's also really important to make sure that as you're doing these things, you connect with your team. Reconnecting with your team is important because we've had to deal with the quarantine. They are required to socially distance. Some of them are teleworking. Some of them are separated from their family because they're afraid to expose their family to COVID. And so there are less opportunities for your staff members to physically engage with others, or I should say face-to-face. -face. And so it's important to make time for a virtual coffee. Do a video chat with your teammates who are at home. Check in and see how they're doing. Uh, it's also appropriate to meet with them one-on-one -on -one with your mask on, with social distancing, and then also to make sure that you offer them professional resources if you think they might need them. And so I just wanna make sure that you make self-care a priority. Check in on your teammates, provide them with emotional support and professional resources. But it's also important to let them know it's okay if they're not okay. And I wanna let you know that it's okay if you're not okay. You're doing a great job. You're called to do things that many of us have never been called to do. And we need you, we need the work that you're doing and we really appreciate you. So thank you.